for joining us for our webinar today. Now, what we're going to look at today is an extension of what we looked at last month with the donor screen and the fields and things like that to sort of go through that once we know that we've got data there, it's sometimes it's finding them that becomes the, uh, the next issue that comes up. So some of the things we're going to look at is uh, in the multi-find screen, different things we can do where we can find people by name, like surname, company, uh, different fields on there, the tabs that come up when you do a search. Um, you can use some of the other fields like the extra search field. We can look at filter searching, uh, sorting the results once we actually got them on the screen, and then also the option for creating a selection file once we have the list of people on the screen, depending on what we want to do with the actual list. So sometimes we want to find something fairly simple, and we don't have to or want to go through the whole donor appeal selection process to do that. Um, so there are options that are available to do that. So first of all, again, from the Start menu, we'll go into the donor entry screen. And this is where normally we could search. So if I was just finding a donor with number, of course, that's absolutely the easiest way. So if we've had correspondence go out or something and I know the donor number, I can just put the number in and enter, and that will straight away bring up the donor. So that's sort of uh, very, very easy. For other things, they, I might be saying, look, I need to find the people by name or company name or other things that I want to search for. So continuing from last week, as we go through the, the screens, you can see some of the fields are blue. So in this case here, we're got the first name, surname, the company name, postcode, things like that. Sometimes people will say, but if I just go into the surname and say I type in Smith, I can then page down or click on the button at the bottom here, it does exactly the same thing, but that will bring up the first of my Smiths based on surname and first name. If I wanted to find the one that I'm actually looking for, I have to scroll through the records to find the Smith that I'm looking for. So not a very efficient way to do that, especially when your data gets bigger. So normally the much better way is to use the multi-find button um, the two ways you can get here are press the F11 button on the keyboard or click on the actual uh, multi-find button itself. If perchance the function keys don't work for you for some reason, um, you will find that you, normally when this happens we find that the person has got a keyboard that has a dual use. So instead of F12 just being F12, it might also say print or it might say you know email or something like that. And on those keyboards, there'll be another button, which is the function lock, which changes what the keys do. So that's what the thing that we sort of find normally if the function keys just don't work because there's nothing in Don Man or there's no setting that says don't use them. It just passed us a normal command from the keyboard itself. So in this case, if I go into multi-find, so I can search for, clear that off, the fields as you see them on the screen here. So if I put in first name, surname, whatever it is you're looking for, depends. So normally, if I just type something like SMI in the surname field, down underneath here, it's showing the tick in auto wildcards, which means everything that starts with a surname of SMI should be picked up by this search. Okay. So you can see, I've now got Smith, Smitherman, Smithers, Smithwick. So based on that, but if I said I know so in this case, my list is fairly small, but if I had a screen or more of searches, you know, and, and matches that I've found, then I might want to add more details in the surname or in the first name. So if I just put a W for the first name, then this, this case narrows it right down, and I've only got the one match. Okay. So sometimes you need to go the other way, though, where you might put the full name in and find no records match it because someone's entered the actual name incorrectly. So that's one of the good reasons to sort of go back a few characters and then do a more of a wildcard search where it picks them up. In the case of companies, it's a little bit different because sometimes I might have a company where it has what I'm looking for somewhere in the name, but I'm not quite sure where it is. So for clubs or for trusts and things like that, sometimes people will um, put the organization name in a cert, something or other trust or you know, clubs might be, you know, put in as the Rotary Club of wherever. So sometimes I need to find those records based on something that's in the field. The auto wildcards itself will match from the beginning characters across. 
where sometimes if I want to search within the whole field, I can then type in something like this and put the wildcard or the asterisk both sides of that. What that means is that the system or the search mechanism will now go through all of the donor records, prospects, archives, address records, etc., looking for everything that's got clubs somewhere in the company field. So if I then click on the search, okay, so I can now see the first one is, is in, got the at the beginning. So if I'd searched for, say, Heckenberg, looking for the bridge club, I wouldn't have necessarily found them. So I could have, in this case, put Heckenberg in there and still found the records. But in this case, it's brought up the two records that I've got where they've got club as part of the name. But in this case, club could have been in the middle of the name, the end, it really wouldn't matter. I can still find the records using that mechanism one way or the other. When we do the search by default, if I put nothing in at all and just search, the system will go through and at the top of the screen it will show me other tabs. So in this case I haven't got any archive records, otherwise I'd have not a tab at the top showing that there's archive records matching my search. In this case it's every record in my sort of uh, system here I've got. So in this case, if I had searched for a name and the system had come up with prospects, I can then click on the prospects and say, okay, that's the record I'm looking for. Okay, exactly the same for the address records. So where I typed Smith in previously, if I just do that search again, okay, so you can see it's found the Smith the same as we had previously, but at the top of the screen there's also an address record. Okay, so that's handy because sometimes I might have a corporate record where I might have the PA's name under the address record and the address type might be you know PA or contact or whatever you want to call the actual code but I can still find the main record based on the address record. If per chance a donor record is totally deleted it doesn't automatically delete all the address records the same as donations and pledges and, and notes and all of those things uh, are maintained by the system even though something might have happened with the donor record itself. So sometimes if I search for something that came up with just an address record, I can still find the donor number that was the record or the address was related to, but I might not actually have the donor in the donor file anymore. Hopefully it is in the archive, but um, just from uh, an, a, uh, a job that I had logged in the last week or so, there was a record that was purely just an address record. but using the same sort of searching, it was just a matter of, you know, making sure we look up here to see which file the actual system has found that particular record in. Once you've got the list on the screen, if I wanted to do something with these records on the main housekeeping screen or look through them, whatever it may be, I can go into the first record. If I was doing some sort of housekeeping on the records and say, look, I want to go through and make sure they've all got flag one ticked for some purpose, then I can make the change to the record, right click on the save button, and instead of now having to go back into the multi-find search, if I hold down the control button and page down, it's now going to take me through the records that are on my search. Okay? So in this case, they're all there, and you'll see on the screen down the bottom here, it's got my initials, so my login, and my multi-find search, and it's record number three on what I'd search for. So sometimes, you just want to look through all of the, you know, we might have five records that are all from the same company or something. So if I search for the company, I don't have to keep going back and doing search. But in that case, I could also go to the company field and scroll down, the same as I did previously on the surname. Yeah. With the company, though, sometimes people put the company name in slightly differently. So, you know, um, it really depends on consistency for entering the data is going to dictate a lot of what we do as far as finding the records as we go through. So go back to MultiFind. Okay. So on there, as I said, we've got our, our list of names. If I then said, like, I wanted to resort that by whatever it may be, the street address, so you can just, like you do in Excel, except you don't have to choose, you know, sort it. You can just click on the column, and that will resort them based on alphabetic, based on that particular column. Okay. So sometimes it's easier to find a record when you've got quite a number of records that you're trying to find, to sort them by based on something that's going to make it much easier to find. Okay. 
when you do the search, just like I did previously where I've just put an initial in, of course you can put uh, a state in or you can put a postcode in, which would probably be easier, and that will again narrow down the search. Okay. If perchance you don't have, um, oh, sorry, you do have load last search ticked on your search screen, it just means that when I come into here next time, the system will start doing the search straight away. Okay. Normally that's not what we need to do, and if I did, the name will be there, so I can then select search, but it's not automatically going to happen. In a smaller system, or if you've got a very fast system, you might say it doesn't matter, it's only going to take a second or two to find the records, but as, you know, as data grows and we get more records, um, then that might you know, sit there and wait for a minute or so while you're waiting for it to finish the search. So normally, if you turn that off, um, it's not really something that you're going to use a whole lot. So from there, if I said, okay, that's fine, I can find by the surname, I can find by the first name, the same sort of things I can find by the street address, okay, everyone in a particular suburb, okay, state, postcode, company. Okay. So if I knew that what I was looking for in the company started with something, like I said, well, that, so I want to search for every record in the system that starts with, the company name starts with that, I can put that in, and you can see then, Yes, I've now found the matches because they're all starting, but it wouldn't show me the same level that I was trying to find when I was just looking for clubs. So it's really a matter of using those um, asterisks or the wildcard characters around what it is you're looking for. It will be a slower match because it has to look through the whole field and see if the, you know, the company field contains that bit of text that you're looking for. Whereas when you do the normal search, like on the surname or the company name, Normally the records will come up fairly quickly because it relates back to the donor screen where the different colours are indicating that that's part of an indexed field. So if I can find records using one of the index fields, it's going to be a much quicker match for me. But sometimes, as I think everyone will know from experience, sometimes what you're looking for isn't exactly how it's been entered into the database. So sometimes we have to do you know, a more refined search or the wildcard search to try and narrow it down and make sure we can find that record wherever it may be in the system. Yeah. But there shouldn't be too much stopping us from doing that. Sorry, pop-up screen there. <laughs> the other field that's on the screen that is useful for finding records is this one here where you've got extra search field. So this will allow me to choose any field that's part of the donor's record and say I'm looking for a particular thing. If I click on the drop down, okay, so you can see all of the fields that make up the donor's record are in, in here so I can choose them. So if I was looking for something in particular, then I could go through and say, okay, I'm looking for everyone who's got whatever it may be. Sort these by number, make it a bit easier. So I wouldn't normally use surname, first name, etc., because they're part of my normal searching. But if I was looking for every record that, say, had a donor type of business, so then I can use the donor type field there, and in here I can then type in, if I spell it right, I can then type in the code that I'm looking for. So now my search isn't searching for a particular um, company or a particular surname, it's searching for all the records that are identified by a particular code. So again, if I search, you can now see it's brought up my match of all the records that have got something in the company field. Yeah, or not so much the company field, that they're all marked as a business record. So if I went into one of the records, I can now see, yes, that's a business. Again, holding down the control button and scrolling through, we can see that it has now found all of the records based on that criteria not necessarily a particular business. So depending on your codes, um, you can utilize this for. The only one that you can't really do that for um, in that fashion is the extra codes because there's eight single codes available, but the system maintains a field that we've talked about before called extra codes, which is the plural of all of the extra codes. To do that, that sort of searching, if I were to clear the screen here, down the bottom of the screen, and this same mechanism is available on the main donor screen, you'll see there's a button here called Add Filter. 
if I click on there, I can then, again, I've got a list of all of the um, fields that make up the donor record. So I might then do the same sort of thing. So I'm looking for, yes, yeah, so I can see every field there. So again, I've got donor type. Must be equal to, When you type in the codes, because the codes, all of the code fields in Domain, except title being the unique one, um, are in capital. So if you're searching for a particular thing, make sure that you put it in capital so that you do a match. Yeah. So I can choose, do this, exactly the same sort of thing here, but then I might say, but I'm looking for records that have got a particular extra code. Because I don't know whether the extra code would be an extra code one or extra code eight, if we look at the list of fields, you'll see the individual codes are there, but now I've got one called extra codes. If I choose must be equal to, I'll only get records that have got that single extra code that I'm looking for and no extra, no other codes at all. So what we'd normally do is say, I'm looking for extra codes must contain, and then I can put the code in that I'm looking for. So you can see, on the main screen at the top where I've got the extra search field, I really only am limited to one parameter. It can only sort of one field in if it's not to do with the standard fields here. But in here, I can start building uh, a bit more like I do in the report, right, or a bit of a, a query to say I'm looking for records that are this, and they might be this. It may also be something to do with donation total. If I were to go down, then I can say donation total, must be greater than or equal to, so if I put something like a 1,000, and then enter. So you can see at the bottom of the screen here, now I've got two criteria for my filter. If I then accept, the system will go through and now find the records based on the two criteria was that one that it was a business, so we can see each of these have got something in the company name, and that they'd also given a $1,000, okay, as a total donation. So, and sometimes, just to find a, a list of people to do something quickly, I can do the same sort of thing that I can, um, in a very limited fashion, that I can do in the donor appeals, but I'm really limited to only a couple of fields. I can't do a very complex sort of searching in here, and it's not designed for that. But I can get down to saying, look, I've just got this list of records. They match my criteria based on the two things that I'd asked for, and I do then have an option down the bottom here to create a selection file from what I've matched on the screen. Yeah, so if I say this called okay, so in this case I'm just going to call it business greater than a thousand. Okay, so the system now created a list of the fourteen matches that we can see there. So then I've got a selection file that I can use to do a merge file or do a report or anything else that I would do with uh, a selection file normally. But I haven't had to go through the whole kit and caboodle to, um, to do the whole selection criteria. So it's really a matter of if you're not quite sure what it is, you know, on the main screen, because when you get into here, there's no sort of help facility to show you the values in the code. So sometimes if you're not quite sure, go back to the main screen, look at the code you're looking for. Okay. So obviously don't change it on the donor's record, but if you just jot down the code or even copy it, then clear the screen so we're not saving that donor so there's no change. I can then go back to MultiFind and I can paste that in. Okay, so I can just say, okay, I'm looking for donor type equals whatever the code may be. So the two things really to do are either write it down or copy and paste it in, especially with the extra codes, because the extra code list could be, you know, 100, 200 codes long, where each person has one or two codes that sort of go through from there. So hopefully to the basic sort of look at that, um, that'll go through. One of the other options you've got on the screen here, if I put my... Okay, actually I didn't need that because I've, I've still got my filter active down the bottom here. So until I actually go into here and say cancel the filter, uh, whatever I search for up here will sometimes trick me 
because I'm going to find, say, hang on, I'm not finding records that I'm expecting to because my filter was still active. In this case, if I'm just going back to what I'd looked for before, and looking for my data type, for businesses, okay. So by default, the system is showing the data number, the title, first name, surname, the company field. Now there is a button down the bottom here which says show full name. So if I click on there, you'll see what that has done to the, the look of it. So it's now showing me the company name, okay, as well as the person's name in one field. Some people prefer that view because you can sort of see it all in, in a much more condensed sort of part of the screen. Um, if you don't want that, then you can just hide, do the same, click on there, and that'll basically show me the extra fields. The fields that by default will show on the screen as we go across, okay, so I can see email is the last one. So I've got pretty much the contact details, title, first name, surname, company, street one, street two, suburb eight, postcode, okay, and the email address. If the chance you wanted to show um, a different field on there, there is a button available here called a select user column. Okay. If I click on the STD or the standard button down the bottom there, It'll say the standard things have been selected, but then I might answer and say, oh, look, I want to also share the position on the people's record. Okay, so I can now see that as well as the other fields, I'm also now getting the position field coming out. So you can customise the view a little bit because I've done that. Okay, I'd have to then muck around. But now that I've sort of added that, it's changed the way that's just so you can see that if I try and show the full names or hide the full names because I've added my own field, it's saying, well, I'm not going to let you do, do that. Ideally, it should, and that, that might be something that we'll get the programmers to, to have a look at and see why that has happened. But it does mean that sometimes you can choose extra fields to show. Um, it should, in theory, save that so that when you come back in to do a search next time, that those fields are there. So you can go through and, and do that same sort of thing. So the basics of, of the multi-find is, is really just saying that if you know what it is you're looking for uh, is in a particular field, then the index fields, as, as we said previously, the first name, surname, company, um, the postcode are all index fields. And the way to identify those on the donor's record is that they'll be the blue field. Any search that we do will be much quicker if we can use one of those fields. Okay. Where I'm using donor type, then the system has to search through all, all records because there isn't an index on the donor type. So it will be a bit slower or sometimes a lot slower depending on how many records you've got as opposed to searching by name. But you can still use this same mechanism for those general sort of searches. Everything else is really like our Smith search is really just putting in the first few characters. If my filter's on, you can see if I search now, it's just giving me no results because in this case, I've got no records to start, have a surname that's SMI that also equal this criteria. If I cancel that, so my filter's now black to show the filters off, I can then search again. So using the filter is good, but like everything, sometimes we have to remember to turn it off, otherwise every time I come into a search, I'm going, to, I'm going to think there's something wrong here because it's no longer showing me uh, what it, uh, I know the record should be in the system there somewhere. Okay. So try and avoid, if you can, the search on the main screen here, by, especially by name, because you will have to scroll through you know, every record, whereas Multifind will search not just the donor file, which is what you'll get when you do it on the main screen. It will search my uh, donor file, my archive file, if you've got prospects, the prospect file, and also the address records. So hopefully anywhere in the system that you've got one of these names and addresses, um, the system should be able to find them, or this program should be able to find the, the data and show you the records on the screen so you can select who it is. So this is the same sort of mechanism you'll see when you're doing duplicate checking and things like that as you go through. Uh, the system will just say, look, here's basically what's coming up. The other thing that you can do with the filter is I can do it from the main screen here. It does exactly the same thing. 
But if it's something that I wanted to use again and again, because it's a very common thing, what I can do is in my filter here, I can go through and say, look, I want to save that filter. Okay. I can then give it a name. Okay. Call it whatever you like. The filter's now been saved. So if I've cancelled that and I get now go back into Add Filter, I can click on the Load button. There's my test filter. Okay. So you can see that my criteria is now back. So uh, again, it's, it's something that I can use fairly easily if this was a consistent search that I was going to do. For this particular one, probably not. But if I've got um, you know, someone who is basically, say, monitoring the volunteers or something like that, then I can add a filter so that you know, it narrows down the records that they have to search through or that they can see even. So it depends on what sort of level you want to you know, tighten things up. But hopefully that's sort of given everyone a bit more of a a heads up on, you know, MultiFind is much more useful for things than, than just searching by the surname and the company, which are the most common things. There are other things that you can do with it. And you can then, you know, use the search listing here to create a selection file. And as you would do for anything else, you can then use that selection file to go through and do a mail merge, uh, do a report, make some changes to the records in bulk whatever it really was that you wanted to do, you can then utilize uh, MultiFind to help you do that. So hopefully that's given everyone a, a bit more of a um, heads up on that. And I'll hand over to Murray now, and he's going to show you more about the um, down history and some of the fields and uh, the screens that you'll see there. So thank you all. Hi, everybody. Um, now that we know how to find a donor, um, what we need to often do is find out some information about them. So we can go into donor entry, of course, and we can use those techniques that Gary's just shown us to find the particular donor in question. Now, quite often when you want to look at it, there's a lot of information that potentially can be stored about each of the donors, and depending on who the donor is, some may have a lot of information, some may have a little. Um, as we would have seen last time that we had our webinar, on the second donor screen there is some summary information uh, and we can simply access that once we've brought up our donor record. We can simply press F2 and so we've got this summary information down the bottom. So we've got the summary history showing us their highest, their first and the last three donations. We've got their overall total and count, the total and count last year, total and count this year and then we've got a mailing history summary as well down at the bottom. Now that is summary. If we want to find detailed information, we need to go somewhere else. Now, um, there is two places that we can go to find out some of that information, and it's presented to us in a couple of different ways. Most people are probably aware of the dollar symbol at the bottom, or F8 on the keyboard is the equivalent of that. But before we go into that, I'm actually going to show you another way that people either don't know about or perhaps have forgotten about. And that's this overview button here next to the actual donor number. If I click on that, I'll get a little pop-up. And this gives me in a very brief um, synopsis just what sorts of information that we have about this donor that's not actually part of the donor record. Last month, we looked at the, the two screens and what all that information was. This is um, now looking at all the other bits of information that are stored in other files. So what this is showing us is, in this case, we have some at least one second address record. And I can look at that by clicking on the plus there, and it tells me that there is a business type second address record and also a home. And again, if I click on the plus next to that, it's giving me the business address. And if I click on home, it gives me a completely different home address. Um, there are some contact records, and so when I go into that, it tells me the different types of contact records that this particular person has. So there's been some form of bequest contacts, and if I click on that, wow, there's quite a lot of those, and I can see who it was, what they did, and when it was. There's some emails that have gone out, same sort of thing there. Mail, phone, and I think in this case, T is actually for telephone as well. Um, there are some relationships, 
So between this donor and some other people, you can see all of the people that um, donor number one in this case is related to and, and what their relationship is. Oops. Um, they've been invited to certain functions. So you can see here, um, these are the different functions that they've been invited to when they were and what the status was. So he declined to go to those ones. He accepted but obviously didn't attend this one. Uh, attended this one, few accepted, some attended. Essentially a lot of this information that we're looking at right here is information that we will see when we actually click on the dollar symbol, but it's presented to us in a slightly different manner. And so sometimes this can be more useful to us than actually going into the dollar symbol. Here we're looking at pledges. You've got a lot of lapsed pledges. There's quite a few cancelled ones or closed ones. Um, doesn't look like he's actually got any current ones there. But it's very easy to actually see that just by looking at it. With donations, it's giving me year by year. And then for any of those years, I can simply click on it to see a total with each of the individual donations for that year listed there. Involvements, most people don't tend to use it, but you can see he was the chairman for a while, a member of the board. I don't know what Big Fish was and some sort of testing there with Big Fish. So most people don't tend to use involvements, but that's for just where people have some sort of close association with the organization. Uh, in this case, He's um, either bought or ordered some products from the product system. These are being sold. These are consigned to him. He's got some free Frisbees um, and the rest have been sold. Now, the next one's notes, volunteer, bequest and raffle. You can't get any extra information, but it's basically telling you that, yes, there are some notes. He is a volunteer and it's a current volunteer. He is a bequest or he is a bequest prospect and at the moment his current status is he's seeing interested in the bequest. He has some raffle tickets and he's also included in some mailing lists so here we can see what those things are. Now you will only see entries here for which this particular donor has at least one record. If he had no second address records then you wouldn't see this option here. If I get out of there, I'm going to go to a different record. Um, this is going to be donor number nine, because donor number nine is probably going to be a little bit more typical of the, third, the type of people that you would have or the data that you have stored behind them. If I go into here, again, you see fewer of the different types of records that we're storing about Mr. Albert Einstein. Now, most of the time when you do want to look at a donor's history, you would typically use this dollar symbol at the bottom. Now you'll notice in this case that the dollar symbol on the button is in red. That indicates that there is some donations, uh, some donation history for this particular person. F8 is the same as clicking on the dollar. If I click on this, you can see here across the top we have a number of different tabs. Each of those tabs represent other types of records that we have stored about this particular donor. So in this case we've got, well, there is no summary. The summary is actually a summary of the donations, but we've got donations, pledges, functions, tickets, contacts, and change log records. If there were no pledges, then the pledges tab wouldn't appear. Now if there are any donations whatsoever, they will always be the first tab that comes up. So in this case you can see there are a number of donations there. Down at the bottom we have a summary. So we've got the total overall, $4,000, 44 donations for an average of just $92. Here we see a scrollable list of all of those donations and there's some actual information a little bit further across so we can actually scroll across as well, see a little bit of extra information. Like when Gary was doing the multi-find, we can sort any of these columns. So if we want to find out what their highest or their lowest donation was, we can click on date, on amount. And at the moment, this is sorted from lowest to highest. And so if we scroll down to the bottom, you can see the highest ever donation was 500. If I click on it a second time, it's sorted in reverse order. So now when I go to the top, that's when I see the highest donation. And any of these fields across the top here, we can actually sort on. Now, we can see a lot of information when we scroll across, but there's potentially other bits of information that we may wish to see, or you may wish to see it all in one hit. 
most of the tabs that we look at here, we can actually drill down into actual detail. So if I wanted to look at this in memoriam one, I can just double click on it and it now appears in full screen here. Now, you cannot make any changes whatsoever to donations, but when we start to look at some of the other tabs, some of those records we will be able to make changes to. So I can just close that down. Okay, so you'll see we have a series of radio buttons across the top there. Um, so if we only wanted to look at particular types of donations, we could do that. I'm actually going to escape out of this particular person and I'm going to go back to my original donor, number one. And when we go and have a look at his record, you'll see there are quite a large number of tabs across the top. And in fact, we've got these scroll buttons here where we can actually go and there's even more. So this is an unusual circumstance. I'm sure that no one there would have anyone with quite so many of these different tabs there. But again, it's highlighting the fact that you are seeing just those tabs for which this particular donor has associated records with them. So now looking at those radio buttons, at the moment we're looking at all of them and there is a total of 264 for this particular donor. If I click on sales, then I'm only seeing donations to or payments to sales campaigns. Membership payments, same thing. Any raffles that he's paid for? In memoriam donations, subscriptions, well, he doesn't have any of those. There's some pledges. Now, of course, pledges will also include the memberships as well because memberships are typically um, pledges as well. Any function campaigns that he's paid money to? Typically, that would be where they've purchase tickets to something. And then pure donations is just where it's money that goes to what we would classify as an ordinary campaign. They're just giving a donation. It's not a function. It's not a sale. It's not membership. It's nothing else. It's just a pure donation. And of course, going back to all donation, all transactions gives us the, uh, the total ones of those as well. A little bit like with the multi-find, we've also got a similar sort of thing where we can tell it which particular columns we wish to see. So if there's certain columns that we're not seeing, we can click on the user columns. Uh, sorry, uh, I've got to select the user columns first. So I can pick whatever things that I want. So you know, I might pick um, the amount, obviously. Uh, I want to know the bank account it went into, what batch number it was, what the campaign was, the ledger code, maybe what the comment was, and the date. Uh, and yeah, I'll take the nation type and uh, we don't really need the donor number in this case. So if I go OK, that's the only columns that I can see. And of course, I can then sort by you know, batch number or any of these columns, chart of account codes, anything like that. And if I want to go back to the way it was, I can say delete user columns, or I could have said show all columns, and I would have got the same thing there. We have this button also that says include contacts. So if when you do a mail out, you um, record that and there is a a contact record for them, we can click on include contacts and you'll see where there is a contact record, it's now interspersed among the donations. So, you know, here we've had a donation back in 2014, then he received a mail out, then another mail out, then he made a series of donations, then another mail out here. So as we scroll through this list, you can see just where the donations are in relation to the mail outs and emails and the forms of contact that you've had. So you may discover that you mail, you, um, somebody makes a donation after they mail out, but then you never get another donation until you mail them again. So that way you know that your mail outs are being effective, but that that person just doesn't happen to give out of the goodness of their heart off their own back. It's only when prompted by some form of contact. Uh, and if we click on that again, it just goes back to the way it was. Now, if there are any donations whatsoever, there will always be a summary. And the summary gives you a year-by-year -year synopsis of how many donations they have given in that year and how much money. And it will also give you the relative or the, the difference between the current year and the year before it. So this year they gave 202957 The previous year, $380. That was an increase of $202,577, which is a 53,000% increase. So the figures here are probably a little atypical, but it still gives you the idea. Um, if you prefer to use financial year, you've got a button to do that as well. Okay, again, you've got the radio button, so you can just look at particular types of 
destinations, when they gave those. We can look at when they did their sales. So it just gives you a year by year synopsis. Moving across the top, we have soft credit. So in this case, it would appear as though there's been no soft credits made, although I suspect um, the, the problem with that was that we still had our uh, radio button in effect when we went back to all transactions and now to soft credit. We see that there's been three donations soft credited to Johnny B. Good, one from Albert Einstein, one from probably Audrey or Catherine Hepburn, and one from Ree Novell, and here are the details. Whenever you do a reversal, if there's some sort of thing wrong, maybe a check has bounced or um, you've made a mistake and you reversed it out, there will be a reversal record for it. So you can see here what the donation was originally, and if it's been done correctly, you'll see the reason why it was actually reversed out. Again, same radio buttons that we've already seen. Now with pledges, we can see a synopsis of all the pledge records that he's got. But if ever you want to actually date one of those, say we want to update member, I can just double click on it and that will then bring up that record and I can make whatever changes that I want here um, as well. Now, if I actually escape back out of here, I can of course go to pledges and it will bring them up alphabetically. Oh, it's brought up in anyway. Um, but to find the one that you want, you know, you, you may well have to scroll through a whole heap of those before you, you find the one that you want. So by actually going into the dollar symbol and clicking on pledges, um, it's a lot easier. So in this case, I had it sorted in the reverse order. So if I wanted to go to this one using the pledge button from the donor screen, I'd actually have to page through all of these other ones before I got to it. Whereas here, I can see them all, and I can just simply double click the one that I want. The same sort of thing applies with functions. You've got a number of function records here. If I want to open up any of these, I can just simply double click on it and bring up those details. I can escape out there or I could have saved that record. But again, you can see just looking at it all at once, which ones he's accepted, which ones he hasn't, which ones he's attended, how many attended, and just some very basic details about those. With trust, this is trust application. So if you've applied to an organization for some um, money, then you can uh, see the current status of these. So that was successful. These two are successful. We're still waiting from January last year on this request for $15,000. And again, double click on it. It just brings it up and we can say, yes, um, we were successful. Uh, let's say they reply by today uh, eventually. They were successful and they're going to give us $10,000. Um, so I can just save that, go yes to that, and that's hopefully saved. And if I escape out now, it probably won't update automatically, but if I go to functions and back to trust, it now says that it was successful and I got $10,000. Batch donations just shows you any donations that's been entered into a batch that has not yet gone through end of day. So this is sitting in a batch that's still waiting to be fully processed. Tickets is any raffle tickets. If you've got the raffle system, you can see the actual raffle, the ticket number range and how many tickets there are and what the status is, allocated, sold, returned, lost, whatever it is. Contacts, these are the contacts, any form of contact that you've had with uh, a particular donor. And again, if you wanted to update it, you could do so. You also have a similar sort of thing. If I go back to the donor screen, I can click on contacts and basically get the same information from here as well. And we can add one very easily from this particular point. Um, okay, I'll just scroll a few of these across now. So tickets, contacts, volunteer, any hours that they've worked as a volunteer has been recorded here. Um, where have we gone, volunteer, hours. Uh, any acknowledgements that they've received for the work that they've done as a volunteer. The change log, um, I think we might have mentioned this one a, a couple of months ago, but this shows you any changes that have been made to the donor record and when, or in this case, it created a couple of second address records, so these were new ones, so it's all of the fields have been updated. But you can see here, um, today, the 15th of the night, it's 12.20, I, being MN, changed Street 1 to Avenel Court, but it used to be 47 Wales Street, blah, blah, blah. So you can see those sorts of things there. Um, any involvement, well, we saw that from the uh, overview screen. 
and again we could have double clicked on those. If, uh, child sponsorships, these are just the relationship that this person has and these are the child sponsorship relate, um, dollars or payments that have been made. So that's pretty much all of the possible screens that they, that, or tabs that you may have. There could be a few others but um, generally speaking those are the ones and in most cases you can just double click and drill down into them. So there is one last thing that I'm going to show you here. If uh, a donor record has been merged or archived or something like that and you do a search perhaps and you can't find them but you know their donor number, if we go into housekeeping and click on this view donor history, it asks for the donor number. Now if I do number one it's going to show me what I saw before. If however there was somebody that had been perhaps merged with another record, there would be no history apart from one and that would be the change log and the change log would have one entry that would say something along the lines of merged with donor number XYZ, you know, one, two, three, four. So if you're looking for somebody, you can't find that particular donor and you wondered what happened to them, go into housekeeping, click on view donor history, type in the donor number and it'll bring up anything that's there. If they've been archived, you'll see the full history, um, but the change log would show that they had been archived as well. Okay, so I'm going to hand back now to Marla for any questions that we may have. Thanks Murray and thank you Gary. Um, so we'll just keep it still on Murray's screen but if you do have any questions please open the control panel and then type your question in the uh, question box and send it through and we'll read them out. So we'll just give everybody a couple moments because there's no questions yet posted. Um, and while we're doing that, I'll just remind everybody that our next webcast is scheduled for Tuesday the 20th of October, again at 2 o'clock, um, and that will be Australian um, Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So for our Queensland uh, clients, it'll be an hour earlier for you. And um, of course, details will be on our website shortly and emailed out to you as well about that, um, that webcast. And also you'll find recordings of all of our webcasts, including today's, um, will be on our website shortly. And you can find that at donman.net.au under the Resources Recorded Webcasts uh, tab. And they're also posted in our monthly newsletter. So just giving that a plug. So a couple of questions coming through from Graham. Finding a donor when you only have an email address, is do you use MultiFind? I guess that's one for you, Gary. So I hand the controls back to you. Oh, you can do. Oh, yeah. I can. Do you want to show it on the screen? You can. Yep. <laughs> so, sorry, are you taking over, Gary? Or? Uh, yeah. Can you see my screen now? So the, yeah. So the question was: Finding a donor when you only have an email address, do you use MultiFind? Yep. MultiFind is still be your easiest. Um, so from the donor screen, if we go through, so then they can say email field and put the email address into the here and then search. Okay, so it's clear off the search for us moment. Get email and in the next field put the actual email address and then search for that. In fact, you'd only really need the first little bit of it because that would probably be more than enough to do the find. Yeah, because most emails are, are unique at the beginning, whereas you might have a whole lot that are also like a big one. So yeah, it did the first part because all her wildcards again will be on already. And the email is one of the index fields, so it should be fairly fast. Great. Thank you, Gary. That appears to be all the questions we have for today. So, um, Happy people thank you. Day. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so thank you everybody for joining us and thank you Gary and Murray for another informative webcast. Um, as I mentioned, Tuesday the 20th of October for our next webcast and if you do have any further questions about today's topic, feel free to email us at info underscore donman at advsol.com or give us a call. So that concludes our webcast for today. Thank you all for joining us and bye for now. Goodbye for now. Bye everyone.